Hello guys, uh, welcome to Theories of Learning, screencast for acquiring movement skills. Now basically, um, you, you've tomorrow, I think your lesson both groups have got um, a little bit of finishing off to do on um, the catastrophe theory of arousal. I can't remember if both groups haven't done it, I'm pretty sure they haven't. Then we're going to go on to the Theories of Learning, which is look at, we're looking at here. So this is our last little kind of subtopic for acquiring movement skills. Basically we have to look at kind of three theories and then uh, three laws via Thorndike. These kind of link quite closely to operant conditioning but we'll look at them separately so if I said to you quickly now um, you know today's screencast is going to be on operant conditioning and basically we're looking at how you condition people to learn new behaviors via creating a stimulus response bond now that's something we've talked about quite a lot throughout the year uh, through positive reinforcement and again that term will come in um, during today's uh, screencast so then we'll look at observational learning theory and cognitive learning theory in one lesson and then, like I said, we'll finish off looking at reinforcement and um, Thorndike's laws after that. Okay, so basically, going on to operant conditioning then, what is it? Okay, so when we answer a question on this, you need to know what type of theory it is. So what some of it is social learning, so you're learning from society. Uh, others will be like a connectionist. Um, others will be like a gestalt theorist, which I'll talk about later. Then we need to know what's important, but more importantly, the key components of the theory are most important. Now, when you get to here, you're going to get two options on a learning theory uh, exam question. They're either going to ask you to talk about application to a sporting example or application to a balanced, active, healthy lifestyle. Now, if it's a 10 mark question, which this has been four times out of the kind of 13 10 mark questions, um, they ask for both. Okay, so you have to be able to talk about both and with detail. So it's important you know firstly the fundamental basics of the theory, and then you can apply it to two to areas, both like skills and balanced active healthy lifestyle. So going on from here then, operant conditioning. So you don't have to copy this now. All I need from you is to kind of get an understanding. So I'll ask you to write one thing when I finish talking. So basically operant conditioning is based around kind of this notion that in order for you to learn the behavior you've got to make a connection between a stimulus response bond now basically a stimulus you know might be a condition or something that you know like uh we'll talk about in a minute of badminton so try trying to learn a smash in badminton you might have a hoop set out uh, at a point in the opponent's half where you have to try and smash the ball into uh, smash the shuttlecock sorry into over the net okay so you'd have a target now basically that's a stimulus when you get the response e.g you hit it into the um, the hooped area. The key thing then is what you do in order to make that behaviour permanent. Now we kind of talked like strengthening the SR bond. We've already know that positive reinforcement is a key thing to that. But there are other types of reinforcement we'll have a look at: negative reinforcement and punishment. Okay, so basically, what I need you to do is the following: you need to make sure that you uh, just write down quickly now. Uh, Operant conditioning is a connectionist theory where a stimulus response bond must be formed. Okay, it's this bit here, which we'll talk about in a minute, this connection is formed by shaping behavior and reinforcement. So how do we do it then? So basically, the marks you're gonna get are all these things numbered down here. Okay, so the first thing about operant conditions is connection is theory. Then we need to know how do we connect. It's based upon connecting a stimulus response bond. Now, in order to do that, we have to firstly structure conditions. So the structure conditions, the thing you need to write next to it is where you manipulate the environment, e.g have a hoop placed in the uh, opposition's half where you're aiming to do a smash in badminton okay trial and error is kind of a period of kind of where you have uh, as lots of attempts and you kind of try and learn from your mistakes now basically what happens is if you hit the ball and it goes miles outside the hoop you, that's an error okay then you'll try again and tr by seeing the errors and using the mistakes you can kind of then fine-tune your kind of uh, smash to make sure it's going closer when you when you've done that that's known as behavior shaping so when you start to get more uh, successes than errors that is called shaping of behavior and when that shaping starts to take place it's really important that a coach is there to either provide positive reinforcement negative reinforcement or punishment we'll, we'll keep to positive reinforcement negative reinforcement for now uh, in order to kind of strengthen the SR bond so you know if you put that into example for uh, a tennis serve uh, or a tennis smash, sorry, you know, try, you miss, and when your kind of um, successes outweigh the failures, that means you start to shape the behavior for a smash. Then, of course, you need positive reinforcement to really strengthen that stimulus response bond. Okay, so they're the key components. Your core down notes should be type of theory, connection is theory. These are the key bits. Make sure you've talked about the stuff that I've. Um, 
added or kind of uh, verbally sent across on top of these okay and that should form the basis of your questions and what we're going to look at in operant conditioning tomorrow tomorrow's lesson i've given you the example for a smash in badminton what we'll be looking at is um how we apply it to a balanced active healthy lifestyle as well okay thank you